All right. Gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. And uh, it is my pleasure to uh, have this opportunity to uh, interview both of you distinguished uh, alumni. Uh, this is a part of living history. So I'm really, really excited about this. Uh, I want to talk about uh, something we've uh, broached slightly, and that's extracurricular activities. Uh, Charles, particularly, uh, embellish on your experience with the Pershing Rifles. The uh, Pershing Rifles was a, uh, a crack drill unit. Um, oh, I probably composed of about 30, maybe, or less, 20, 20 maybe 20, 20 people. Um, the precision in which we had to drill in terms of uh, handling the rifles, we used M1 rifles, uh, and the movements that we were uh, able to accomplish with those rifles looked very good. And I'm sure you've probably seen similar exhibitions because everyone was doing the same thing at the same time, a little fancier than the regular maneuvers that you would do with a rifle in terms of right shoulder, left shoulder, presenting arms and, and so on. Um, but it took quite a bit of practice to learn the routines uh, and to be able to do them either in sequence or do them at the same time that the rest of the company was doing them. Uh, that was a form of discipline that was different than the regular discipline that you're exposed to in the military. Um, it was a form of uh, teamwork uh, that you learned to appreciate, that you had to work with the other people in order to do things in sequence and afford to come out right. So you had to be on time, you had to do your job within that sequence of events. Uh, it was a, I thought, a very distinguished group, mm -hmm. and I was uh, proud to be a part of it. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. the, were the rifle team uh, ever entered into uh, regional or national competition? Mm -hmm. If so, how, how did you do? Boy, you know, I don't remember that. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we did exhibitions, we did shows, but I don't remember mm -hmm. uh, if we did any particular competitive events. I just. Mm -hmm. Just don't remember that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you spent some time with, with the football team? Oh, I tried it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I tried it, and it was a very uh, interesting experience because I probably weighed about 145 pounds, <laughs> ring and wet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember one particular event, I was on the field for football practice, and the coach had us to do some tackling drills. And I don't remember the guy's name, but I remember he was from Scranton, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And he was a, probably weighed about 175 pounds. Mm -hmm. And his job was to run toward me, my job was to tackle him. <laughs> and I tackled him, but he drugged me for about 15 feet. Mm -hmm. And it was that point that I understood that football probably <laughs> was not <laughs> the sport for me. <laughs> So from football, I think I went to Persian Rifles. I, 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 did, I, I decided, no, this really isn't what I need to do. <laughs> Keith, did you have time for any extracurricular activity? I, actually, you know, the, the time that I had for is, is to go look at the Persian Rifles. I wasn't mm -hmm. a part of it, but mm -hmm. every opportunity that I had, I, I looked at the Persian Rifle drill, mm -hmm. and those guys were sharp. One of the things I remembered, though, Charles, was they would go to the Cherry Apple Blossom Festival mm -hmm. in Washington. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 yeah. I didn't go, but I think uh, Charles went. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And uh, they, they were really outstanding. In fact, I'm looking at some photos here against the wall, and I think there's some photos that Charles is including in some of those photos up mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, th they were sharp. But the intramural sports is what I uh, was involved in mm -hmm. whenever the opportunity uh, mm -hmm. came. And, Which uh, one specifically? Uh, specifically was uh, baseball and um, uh, volleyball and I think basketball but again that was just more intramural uh, companies against each other mm -hmm. if, if I recall mm -hmm. uh, th there was no soccer team there here at, the, at that time if there was I certainly would be you know w would have played soccer and I, as I look back I, I kind of wonder because soccer was something that I did quite well and I think in my evaluation of uh, Widener, of uh, PMC, 
uh, compared with the other schools. If I had looked closely at soccer, I probably wouldn't have uh, come to PMC. But it, it, uh, sports at that time wasn't a, uh, something that stood out in terms of a future. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it, it's, I, I think when you went to school, you, unless you were outstanding in some particular um, form of sports, especially if I recall back then, I think um, Syracuse, you know, Jimmy Brown at Syracuse uh, stood out, uh, but there weren't too many blacks in athletics in colleges uh, at that time. Mm -hmm. Although you can uh, look at Jackie Robinson in the 40s at UCLA and his brother. Yeah. And I remember participating in track, and mm -hmm. I think it was in uh, uh, prep school. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was when I came here to college. Um, and we participated in various track meets around, and I thought I was a pretty good runner, but not necessarily was a good runner, but I thought I was a pretty good runner. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, we had a, an invitation to the pin relays, mm -hmm. uh, and that was really an outstanding opportunity to run in the pin relays. And I ran in the 440 mm -hmm. relay. Mm -hmm. And I can remember taking off like a jack, and running as fast as I could, probably for about the first quarter to a half mile, and then losing steam <laughs> and not doing too well for the last part of that race. And that, that was uh, an outstanding experience, at least. Uh, specifically about the city of Chester and people whom you met, uh, places perhaps where you may have worshipped, and just em embellish on, 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 on that. Keith? Yeah, um, the, the people that I met in uh, Chester was through Charles. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. and Mrs. Uh, Martin Miller, who lived at, um, and I'll mention addresses, uh, uh, 20, uh, 2008 West 9th Street in Chester. Uh, Dr. Miller was a dentist, and from what I gathered, his wife is uh, still with us today. I think Dr. Miller passed away several years ago. And uh, Dr. and Mrs., uh, uh, pardon me, Dr. and Mrs. Uh, L. Hutchison. Uh, Dr. Hutchin was, Hutch, Hutchison was a uh, general physician uh, in um, uh, Chester. And I think Charles can uh, talk more about that. He also had a uh, daughter, um, Mercedes, Mer Mercedes, Mercedes, that Charles knew uh, quite well. And... Um, so th those are the two people that, I, that stood out. And also uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, James Hinkson, who lived at 412 East 17th Street, right around here. There was a, uh, uh, maybe five or six uh, black families. And certainly the, uh, uh, I think the Rollins, uh, Scotty's uh, wife's family, who lived uh, also around there because his wedding uh, Scotty's wedding, that's the uh, first African-American to graduate from Widener in 57. I remember Charlie and myself going to his uh, wedding, and that must have been uh, 58 or 59. I, I don't remember the exact year. But we walked to the wedding, and it was right around uh, here. And uh, these were uh, quite uh, very, uh, what should I say, large homes uh, that uh, these folks live in. But the Hinksons stand out in my mind because they were right around here on campus. And on weekends, they were, you know, we were, uh, th their house was open to us. And I think she's, I, I still remember her iced tea it was probably the <laughs> best around here. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Hutchison, they lived at 1908 West 4th Street. Mm -hmm. And their telephone number at that time was like uh, TR or uh, PL, mm -hmm. uh, you know, f f for the uh, 60s. Uh, uh, pardon me, f f for, for the middle 50s. Mm -hmm. And Keith, you, funny, sad? Well, the, I, I think the, 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 the funniest thing used to be my uh, roommate, mm -hmm. Don Wilson. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know Don would probably hear this too, <laughs> but Don had a problem getting up in the morning. <laughs> and Charlie uh, Lowry, uh, D D Danny Lowry, I should say, Danny Lowry, what we would do, we would either pour water on his face or... <laughs> I remember the one that we did the best, we, he was all dressed and we would just lead him downstairs. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, we just let him into a closet and locked the door. <laughs> I don't think that he recognized that he was in the closet. <laughs>